Hey everybody, welcome back. I guess it's uh, not so much truck talk right now, it's pretty much car talk. <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm just going to get right into this one. Uh, so, a lot's been going on, and I've been looking at, through this time of, you know, kind of silent time, you know, prayer time, and going into examination time. And going into every area that the Lord has been leading me into. And I don't know if it's going to be the next video. But because there's a lot going on this week that I, I want to do. I'm, I'm hoping to do the live event Wednesday. And I'm going to do a practice run tomorrow to see if I can get it. I, I had it working once, but I don't know been a while so anyways I, i'm gonna try that and see if it uploads if it does great then i'll give you a i'll, I'll come back on and give the time and stuff for that there i am uh, so anyways there's a lot of revelation that the lord's been giving me a lot in that goes all the way back to even john and to look at what to me was a lot of stuff that I didn't even realize by watching and reading what's going on. It's basically kind of like God's timeline of what the Bible says to where we're at for the coming of, of uh, Jesus. But we have to look at the harvest. You know, we have to look at what's going on right now. We have to look at Jesus' time and you know, again, examination, 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 examine yourself, ask him to help you. You know, so many people, it, it, it's amazing sometimes how people once believe, say, you know, once saved, always saved, and then when they learn, they change their mind on it. You know, the examination of the churches, you know, you have to make, when that spirit is speaking to you, you can't you can't put a muzzle on the Holy Spirit. You can't let it not work in your life. Listen to it. How do you know? If, it, if something's leading you into a darker direction, you know it's not the Holy Spirit. See, the problem is we, we as Christians, and, and, and not speaking of us in general, but Again, if it convicts you, then great. Let the Spirit convict you so you can change before it's too late. You have to look at what's happening. Is these churches are falling asleep. They're, it's about money. It's about business. It's about, you know, this is what I'm going to do. No, you can't do anything. Because if the church is truly of God, God will provide. God has provided in our lives in so many different ways. I could go back when Darlene and I first got together and all the way into where we're at now. Now, granted, some people don't understand and, you know, things happen. But I tell you what, to have the position I have today and the job that I have today, it's been a long struggle to get where I'm at. It's been a long fight. And I'm grateful. You know, I'm grateful for all the opportunities that I have with the company that I'm at. You know, and who knows? You know, if God tarries, who knows what where this company, where the possibilities will take me. And it's not all about that because I, I'm in much thanksgiving daily to God. Because I don't have to struggle like I did at these other trucking companies. And go through and listen to people full face lie to you all the time. And then, I never said that. Yeah, truly, you did say that. I should have learned and got it in writing. But you learn by living life. You learn by taking chances in life that God has set before you. You know, you think about today just talking with Darlene on the phone, we were talking about Peter. 
and she was describing things, and I and I'm thinking in my head, going, she's like, you know, you figure, but we too were Peter. How many times have some of you been in sin, and you do the same sin, and you repent, you do the same sin, and you repent, you do the same sin? You are denying because you're separating yourself from Jesus. If you separate yourself from Jesus, you separate yourself from the Father. Is that not the same as denial? You're denying Christ. And then you're letting other people that are watching you that know you're a Christian. I mean, I, I was big. I've, I've said it before. If I had to take three characters out of the book of and say, who, who would I put myself with? Easy. I picked them really easy. Job, Moses, and Paul. Moses had a speech problem. When I was little, I had a very bad speech problem. Still today, it'll, it'll rear its head up out of nowhere. And I have to reprogram and rethink my uh, thinking. And, you know, I'm not that little boy anymore that people pick on and, you know, that kind of things. But, uh, it's okay. It's okay to have things in your life that we go, why? But he's the person to ask. You got to let this stuff go. You got to let pain go. You got to let stuff that people go. This last couple weeks, it's been insane. You know, like that one video, the last video just uploaded. I mean, I'm getting attacked from my my youngest daughter. I'm getting attacked from my ex-wife. And it's just, I mean, brutal. So, I, full, I forward the message that... My, my ex said to me and I said it to my youngest son and uh, haven't heard back from him since because some of the stuff on there I believe convicts all of them you know I really don't care what thoughts of really to be honest any of them because in the long run I know the truth and Jesus knows the truth but again I wanted to retaliate so bad. I just wanted to just dive right into that. But now I'm fighting the devil with the devil. I don't mind fighting the devil, but I'm not fighting the devil with the devil. And I know some of you are probably like, what? That's coming with the hell video. We as Christians means we're Christ-like. Everything you do is a Christ-like. Really, think about it. I guarantee it, I don't think one person can honestly say yes. I know some of you are going to be like, well, I can't. No, no, I bet you you can't. Bet you, bet you, bet you, bet you. But here's why. Have you ever talked about somebody? Just recently, I mean, think about it. Have you, a friend called you? Oh my gosh, Marcy wore this ugly, oh I know, and the, and the things that she says and the things she talks about. She, you know, I've just put up with her because I feel bad for, really. Well, I'd better have a friend like Marcy that comes and wears whatever she wants to wear, whatever she likes, whatever she feels comfortable with, than two people that's going to sit there and claim to be Christians and break someone else down. Like, we're so much better. Like, we are so higher than God at this point. We're a bunch of judgmental, hypocritical people. Somebody asked me once, Nelson, do you really believe if the, if the devil sends people in their church? And I said, yeah, go, just go in there and look. Go on, go in there and look. Take a good, hard look around you while you're in there. Hope you got a lot of time. That's all I can say. I know some of you comment on some of the things that goes on. And um, 
some of them I just laugh at. I mean, it's 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 kind of funny when you look at some of these comments and you go, "Wow, so true." And that's exactly what I say. So true. You know, there, the world, our government, what's going on right now is the biggest circus. I think we all can agree on. And again, some of us might not like Trump. Some some may. People, you got to understand there's only one person that can save us, and that's Jesus. Trump can't save us. Biden administration sure is not going to save us. Some of these... Governors of these states that are running, has anybody been watching some of that? I caught one, somebody posted and sent it, and I was watching this and I was like, oh my gosh. You know, and I used to live in that state. That guy, should, he should be ashamed of himself. I mean, it's just now we're getting down to pretty much calling another one because he's heavier set than the rest of them. Well, why don't you just go have yourself a nice meal? Who are we to talk to people like that? I mean, seriously, who are we to talk to people like that? That's disgusting, people. I mean, and this is coming from the person that, I'm telling you, if some of you probably knew me back then compared to where I'm at today, you would be like probably falling over going, wow, I would have never thought of it. I was bad. I didn't care. Look how Christ molds me. Look how he's changing me. I never thought in a million years I'd be on, on any kind of anything talking about Jesus. You look at the Illuminati. You look at all these things that's going on. You look at all these people tattooing themselves. Because the only thing they got left is control over their flesh. Tattoos on top of tattoos. I mean, it just gets exhausting. But we think there's nothing wrong. We look at society and we point fingers at everybody else. Remember a while back, and I'll say it again, when the Lord said to me, he said, so which sin do I judge first? They're all sin. They're all the same. There's no sin higher than or lower than another one. Good example. You break one of the commandments, you've broken them all. There's That's right there, it says, clearly, clearly, there's not one sin higher than the other. Now, I know some of you might think, well, what about adultery? What about murder? Let's roll the dice here, people. I mean, can you honestly say that you have never had a thought or watched a movie and had a thought about someone, a woman, or anything, or a man, and if you're a woman, I'm just going to leave it there. I mean, seriously, that's adultery. Just saying. I've, I've had people come against me because I got remarried after being married. This lady was brutal. I know what the Bible says about marriage. I don't really think being remarried is going to keep me out of heaven. And I don't think staying married to the person I was married to, the very one that falsely accused me of cheating on her, is going to it kept me out of hell because I, I that woman would have been enough to put me into hell and I'm just being evil is evil you know and I'm not breaking her spirit down and I break I'm just saying evil is evil people I don't care what demonic demon that you have it's evil Anybody that can do the stuff that these people do, it's 
evil. It's a demon. You're not fighting flesh and blood. But yet, look at the world. Look at all that's going on outside of our windows. It's going to not get any better. It's going to get worse. We're getting ready to go into 2024. Now, think about life. You think about what's going on here. Look at the last couple years of what we have been through. We have been through social distancing distance from each other not being able to communicate only on phones, FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, whatever that you use I didn't even know half the stuff even existed to be honest with you I didn't know, I had Messenger so I could talk to my uncle which I don't, he just kind of disowned me, I mean, he won't even talk to me he won't even reply It's it's crazy but he, then again, when he did reply, I said, what did I do? Do something to offend you or make you mad? No, nothing. Why? I send you messages, and I know you're on there because you can see the little bubble with your picture on it. And then as soon as I send a message to him, he flits off. I know I've heard, wow, your stuff got hacked again. Blah, blah, blah. I can't help it if stuff gets hacked. I can't help it if someone, you know how many times I've called one of the credit card companies that I have and have to tell them you know because my car gets locked up I said why is my card number? Well we've seen suspicious activity. Really? Again? It's like it gets exhausting. I don't go around advertising please hack me. Please do this. Please do that. Nor am I not going to speak what the Lord gives me. But I'll tell you one thing. Get over, big boy. There you go. Woo. Sometimes I'm glad we don't have nine lives because I'm telling you, there's days driving. I just think they get scared right up out of you. So glad I'm not a truck driver. Joke. You're not a lot of joke. You're not a lot of have fun. I'm offended when you say that Jesus has a sense of humor. Well, okay. Well, I guess I'm going to offend you again. Because when you end up in hell, good luck. Good luck. It's horrible. You don't have to believe me to go there. Just remember that. And when I touch back, when I do that video, I'm going to go into it a lot more and go into the candles, the colors. You know, like I said, on. I, and again, I do apologize because I don't know if it's the one that uploaded before the one that I did or the two in between it that didn't get uploaded. But either way... The one candle that represents the same in both realms is red, and it's blood. Now, you got to look at the signs of what's in front of us right now that people, are, you're missing it. You're missing the Illuminati signs. People think that seeing eye on the back of a dollar bill is God. It's God's eye. Well, that's not God's eye. I, please, I, if you comment on that, you can you can have your opinion. It's truly not God's eye. It's evil. It's on a pyramid. I can go on and on and on and on and on with what it truly means. I actually read an email last night, and I'm going to get back to what I was saying. This person asked me a question. Prove to me what you're telling me is true. 
and I'll believe you. I said, okay. I said, you claim to be in the circle. I said, I didn't claim. I'm not claiming it. I was. Truly. Well, when you spoke about the pyramid, what it truly means, and they went into detail, and I said, okay, what do you want to know? They sent me back, and this is what I was reading this morning. What did your pendant look like? I said, you know, out of all the times that I've dealt with warlocks, I dealt with people that said that they were into witchcraft. I dealt with people said that they cast spells, been into the demonic realm, been into the stuff, did all these things. And you know, not one person have I ever heard talk about their pendant. And I know some of you are probably sitting there right now going, does this make it, does this really matter? Yes, it does. Because it'll also let you know where you were as far as on the pyramid and if somebody is actually telling you the truth. And I guarantee it, so many people are going to be on Google looking this up. Good luck. Because there's a lot of stuff that Google doesn't know. Because it's like a motorcycle gang. You just don't break that code. Now you get Hollywood stars that are going out there and exposing them. Look at Jim Carrey going on the Jimmy Kimball show. Doing the Illuminati triangle with the tongue in the middle and all that stuff. Okay. Depend on which level, I guess. But when you start getting into the spells and you start getting into the candles and all that, I have not met one person yet in any different area that I went in that did not have a pendant. Now, there's a couple people that I've heard that uh, claimed to be in that were in it but I really don't know a whole lot if they actually did spells or anything like that you could be in a witchcraft you can you can go in there and things you can make things happen doesn't mean you mean you need a pendant for that but when you go to do other things like cast spells and stuff like that you absolutely do and I'll be the first one to tell you. Good luck getting a warlock, a witch, or any uh, sorcerer, or anybody else to tell you. But I guarantee if you look at their neck, you'll see a chain or a rope. There's something hanging from that. I put, I'll put money on it. Why am I telling you all this? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because you're not paying attention to your children. You're not paying attention to the nonsense that these kids are watching. Go back to when that little boy went in there and went through that toy box in the garage and found those wands. I'll never forget that. That was probably one of the highlights that if I had to go back and go, that would be it. I mean, what? how awesome is that? And then I think of the girl that was being bullied at school that took a flower, I think it was a flower, in there to the bully. Wow. Right. I would have never thought about that. I would have been taking my fist. Because let me tell you, if you can take a hit from a bully, you can hit and put it out there too. Now, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying. 
That's where the fear comes in because they try to hurt you. They put fear into you because they hurt you. That's what the devil does. You get on, they send you into places where these demons are and they put you through a depression. And the next thing you know, you're going through chaos. You're wanting to take your life. People are going in and shooting up schools, churches, and malls, and everything else because of the voice that speaks to you. You know, I keep having this vision of a large crowd, and I, yet, yeah, I thought maybe I was thinking. And I told Darlene, I said, it, it might be the Thanksgiving Day Parade. But originally, I kept saying New Year's Eve. And it was no good, people. A lot of people lost their lives. A lot of people. And I, I, have, I, I can't really tell what it is. And it's going to be sad if it is New Year's Eve. You know, because there's going to be a lot of people lose their lives. You know, all the wickedness that we see going on in this world. How many people are literally praying for these people? You know, you think about these sick demons that are taking children out of a mother's womb and beheading them. Well, let me tell you right now, people, don't go to hatred. Because what's going to happen to them in hell is not a joy part, a walk in the park. You know, it is by far going to be the worst place that you're going to experience going to be forever and ever and ever. But you have to understand we need to start praying. We need to pray. I try to, if I happen to go by a church and I'm seeing it when I'm driving, I try to pray for it. If I go by an accident, I try to pray for the responders and the people that most of all that they're safe, that most of all if the people are on their way and their their life is slipping from them, that if they don't know Christ, they have an opportunity. I pray for the neighborhood. I pray for people driving. I, I even pray when I'm driving sometimes and I'm tired going, please, Lord, don't let me hurt someone. Like right now. Woke up this morning and I'm really not feeling good. I haven't. I mean, it's like since last week, I think it was. Well, matter of fact, when I did that video, you know, I, I haven't been the same. It just, I don't feel good. I just don't feel right. I push myself daily to get through to what I have to get done. Now, I'm not going to do anything that's unsafe, especially driving an 80,000 pound vehicle down the road. No, thank you. Oh, the last load last night, and I ended up in West Virginia, and um, ended up sleeping in the parking lot. It happens. But as I pulled out. Even though the person that I had to call to find out what this backhaul that I was supposed to be bringing out of this Walmart store got kind of testy, I guess, is the better way to say it. And I said, okay, well, I'm sorry. I've only been here a couple months. I don't know what this is. And nobody seems to know. You think they would know. But there ain't no sense of getting all worked up over someone does. 
or how someone talks to you. Yeah, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying this is exactly how it should be. But sometimes you just got to pray for them people because you don't know what they're going through. They might be going through a hard day. They might not have the peace of joy and love of Jesus in them like we do. Now, I know some people on here that don't follow Jesus. You can tell by some of their comments. But I'm not judging them. I'm just saying, be respectful. I don't disrespect what you follow. Don't disrespect. Or you will be asked to leave. And if you don't leave, then I will make sure you are blocked. Because nobody else really needs to hear your nonsense. And it truly is. But, you know, somebody... I think my grandmother said it once that when things come in your life, it comes in, in your life in, the, in, the, in this set of threes. And I thought back and I was like, all right, who was the first? Now, I kind of look at my daughter and my ex in the same as one because it's just ridiculous. But then I thought about it. Oh, my neighbor. Come against Christmas. And he said, quote unquote, in case some of you didn't hear that video, the father is telling him to tell me these things. And I was like, well, again, I'm not boastful full of myself, but I know dang well as much time as I spent in prayer, if the father needs to tell me something, he's going to tell me. You're telling me that I've never spoke on Christmas. And I said, well, you need to go back and re look and find the videos. And we had a person we used to talk to down in Florida. And she posted, she did a video on a bunch of crazy things. And I don't think, I don't know if Darlene's ever talked to her after that or not. It just kind of went to, you know, she, she used to be subscribed to the channel. Then she unsubscribed. That's how far this went. I'm like, so is that supposed to hurt me? I mean, what, where, where are we at with that? I've never really, I don't think I've ever told anybody to subscribe, but one person the other day, I said, uh, they just found the channel again. They, they couldn't remember what the name of it or whatever. I don't really know if it even has a name. I think it's just got to my name. I don't think it's under any other thing but my name. Somebody asked me a while back, hey, what's, what's the name of your channel? I just look up my name. I don't I don't remember ever giving it a name. Do they give you the name or do you have to give it a name? I don't know. I What it is is what it is. But you look at it and you go, life is the same thing. We're going so fast, we're not paying attention to what's going on around us. It's why... Everything is starting to fall apart. Now you look at it going, and I know some of the stuff I speak, it, it, it might offend people. I'm surely am not sitting out trying to offend you, that's for sure. I really, it doesn't phase me to where it upsets me anymore of what these kids do and the things they say and the nonsense that they speak because first of all I look at their mother and I go yeah and again I'm not saying that I was any better but I know dang well I never did or acted Especially when the truth, I can lay it on the table and let you decide for yourself. You look at it and I go, my kids grew up watching that nonsense. So my thing is, how in the world do they not see it? See what I'm saying? 
as they say, proof is in the pudding. Well, it, there's, it should be right there, but it's not. It's like, I'm, and I'm thinking in my head going, wow, you know, the devil is so clever in your lives, you don't even see what I see. How, how, how are you missing this? How in the world is somebody getting away with saying stuff that they're saying and you don't go, well, wait a minute, that's, that's, not, that's not so true. But are we not doing the same thing? Are we not coming against people? We sure are. We sure are. We do it a lot. We do it a lot. I hate to say it, but we do. We are such... Hypocrites. I gotta get. Uh, I think it's last night. Yep. All right, I gotta spin around. I'm just. Gonna... Anyway, I'm gonna do a part two on this. Um, I just happened to look out my fuel cage and go, "Oh, yeah, I'm about to run out of fuel," <laughs> and that's not good. So, let me get fuel. I'll do a part two.